Welcome back to Uncensored. of Me, Rosanna Lowe, continuing in for Piers just for the next few days. Then he's back from his holes. And I know one story he's been following very closely, Trump. Yet more trials, yet more criminal proceedings, yet more everything else. And of course, we had that mugshot seen around the world days since former President Donald Trump was booked and charged inside an Atlanta jailhouse. This picture of him has become a money spinner. Would you believe it for his presidential campaign? More than $7 million has been raised by his team. That's what they're saying anyway. They're selling T-shirts, beer glasses, bumper stickers donned with the scowled face of the Don, the Republican front runner. So who is the real mug here? The man pat by the police or the scores of people who've paid for their own piece of it? Well, to discuss that, I'm joined by billionaire investor Kevin O'Leary and by the founder and CEO of the investment company Point Bridge Capital, Hal Lambert, also a major Republican donor who switched his support from Trump to Ron DeSantis. So, gentlemen, thanks for making time for us this evening. Kevin, I'll I'll start with you. I mean, there really was no other way Trump was going to spin this other than a money-raising opportunity, right? Well, these are unprecedented times. We've never had a situation in a presidential election where over 90 indictments have been basically registered. And the trouble is probably if if you're an anti-Trumper, I mean, you have to look at it from both sides of the aisle. It's the fair way to review this situation. Uh, It's so noisy now that no one remembers one indictment from another. So if another 100 indictments comes, it's just background noise. Regarding how it's moving the needle, that's the problem for both sides. It isn't. It doesn't seem to matter. The first election with Republican parties come and gone. Everybody's still at 1% except DeSantis. He hasn't moved the needle either. And Trump remains the far ahead forerunner. And these these indictments have not had any traction. Mm -hmm. So to actually monetize it looks like a brilliant marketing move. That that shot, that mug shot, if you hate Trump, you want to wear it proudly. If you love Trump, you want to wear it, wear it proudly. And that's what they're doing. And, and it, it appeals, it seems, on the merchandising front to both sides. And that's remarkable. It really is. And so they're doing a lot of fundraising at the $5 to $20 level online. It's been highly motivational for the Trump base. And it really boils down at the end of the day to what happens in just a few states, as it always does in a presidential election. It'll be Pennsylvania, probably, that decides by less than 100,000 votes. What do those independent voters think? That's unknown. As you said, both sides of the aisle, really important to bear in mind uh, on this. Although in the UK, we have a product called Marmite, uh, which people say you love to hate. And I think when you're looking at the uh, the anti-Trumpers, as you called them there, they may even be a money-spinning opportunity here. I mean, look, there are some memes our producers have prepared about this. Uh, Let's take a look. Uh, You've got him as the Joker here uh, in a national portrait gallery or something like that. I mean, you know, this type of stuff seems to fare well for him, and it's stuff that he's used to, Hal. Talking about the money side of it, um, Trump is in need of quite a lot of money. I'm not talking about his personal uh, finances. We've also obviously seen bits of tax receipts and things over the years. But in terms of his legal fees, it's astonishing at this point. Yeah, I mean, he, it was reported he spent over $40 million just in the first half of this year. Uh, some legal experts I've spoken to estimate it's going to cost him over $10 million a month going forward. Uh, that's a lot of money. And so he's trying to, you know, raise the small dollar money to pay those legal costs. So you've got people making forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, effectively subsidizing a multi-billionaire's legal fees. Uh, you know, it's their choice to do, but uh, you know, it's not being spent uh, to get him reelected. I mean, he's going to be spending most of his money on on legal fees and most of his time. So I think that's going to be a, a real detriment to him. Uh, he gets all the the free media. That's that's helpful, and that's what's kept his poll numbers up. But as far as being able to campaign and being able to actually get out and get in these states, he's going to, I mean, imagine one indictment. He's got four. Uh, I, I, it's it's, it's going to be a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of time with, you know, obviously requests from legal on, on discovery and all those kinds of things. It's expensive. It's time consuming. And I, I think it's a real disservice, uh, quite frankly, uh, to the to the Republican Party and, and to donors uh, for much of that money to have to be used that way. Uh, versus being uh, re-electing uh, people into Congress or uh, a president. Uh, and I'll put to you, you mentioned the four indictments there. Kevin mentioned the sort of scattergun approach at the, at the start when he was talking to us. 
Do you think if it is this sort of uh, lawfare, as people are saying, this strategy is going to succeed or fail for the side that are trying to stop him getting into the White House, Hal? Yeah, I mean, well, so far, the, know, polling I, gone, so far the polling number has gone up for him with these indictments. So, so that's been helpful. I, will it last? I mean, we've got another five months until the first, uh, the first caucus there in Iowa. And, you know, the, the Iowan caucus is very different. You've got to be there. You've got to be working the ground. The same thing with New Hampshire, the same thing with South Carolina. So it's not a national election. So we're not to Pennsylvania yet. And, and by the way, uh, if we look at polling, you know, the independents are not for Trump on this. So I don't, even if we looked at Pennsylvania right now, I don't see Trump winning that state. That's the problem I have with this whole thing is independent, you know, f over 53% of the country thinks that Trump is guilty. So when you go into that with that number, um, that assumes those people are not going to vote for him. That's that seems like a losing hand going into the election. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Kevin, you were mentioning the polling that's Emerson polling out latest. Uh, this is after these Republican debates, which, of course, Trump didn't take part in. Spoke to Tucker Carlson instead, but he was down six percentage points. DeSantis up two percentage points. But Trump's still way out ahead. And Kevin, what about this point that Hal brings up? You know, people are entitled to buy a beer mug or a bumper sticker with Trump's face on it, but they're funding his legal fees and they may not be millionaires themselves. Is there an ethics point in that? I think there's a lot of ethical issues, but that doesn't determine who becomes president. Great politicians, great leaders, great generals, great preachers, great managers are storytellers. And at the end of the day, you can go back to Napoleon. He used to sit around the campfire with his men and tell stories, and those stories emulated all around the empire over a few months. Today, that happens in a few seconds on social media. Nothing is more painful to watch than a boring politician. Mm -hmm. Trump is not boring. Now, you may find it just outrageous that a potential president has been indicted multiple times, but there are millions of people who simply don't care. And at the end of the day, it's one vote at a time. Now, if they did care, these polls at this point should have moved on the first set of indictments. We're past 91 charges. Nobody seems to care. Now, you know, it may frustrate people that don't like Trump, and it must frustrate people that do. But at the end of the day, as I started talking about this, it's totally unprecedented. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Nobody knows. I will remind everybody that you cannot become the president and pardon yourself for a state charge. You can do that federally. So this idea that he's going to win the presidency and then pardon himself, that's not going to work. Some of these charges, like Georgia, are state-based. However, also unprecedented would be throwing a president or a former president or an acting president into prison. Mm. That's not good for the American brand. Many people speculate, even if he doesn't win the presidency, they won't put him in prison, because what does that say about America? So all of these narratives are happening at the same time, all of them unprecedented, and at the center of it, a masterful, genius storyteller that sucks the oxygen out of all of his competitors. Mm -hmm. And pe people keep saying, don't worry, that'll change. Not so far. Well, if he doesn't get uh, put in prison, what does it say about the American justice system, I guess, would be the counter-argument uh, to that. But here, your point on the storytelling. Hal, just finally, before we wrap up, um, one of these criminal trials now set uh, for next year, early 2024, the day uh, before Super Tuesday. What kind of effect is that going to have? Yeah, I think it's going to have a negative effect. And, I, I mean, we're going to possibly see witnesses turn against President, former President Trump. Uh, they've indicted a lot of people, so we'll see what happens there. But, you know, you talk about being a great storyteller. You know, uh, what happened to Napoleon in the end? You know, you brought up Napoleon. <laughs> he, he didn't turn out too well at the end. But I, I will say that maybe the country's ready for more than a storyteller. I mean, look at DeSantis. He's, he's there in Florida. He's working around the hurricane that's coming in. He's looking more presidential. He's not having to, to fight indictments. I think there's, there's possible candidates out there like Governor DeSantis that can show leadership between now and the first caucuses. Uh, and people may change their votes because the majority of the country does care. Uh, maybe the majority of the Republican primary voters don't care right now, but the majority of the country does. And we're trying to win a general election, uh, not 50 percent of the Republican vote. So you're back in DeSantis now, Hal. Uh, Kevin, Hal, thank you so much. Great talk. <laughs>